Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video. Today I am sharing a breakfast, lunch, and dinner meal prep video with you sharing six skinny taste recipes. This one was requested by my sister, so I was happy to make it happen. Here I'm just sharing some of my skinny taste cookbooks that you can find these recipes in. I'll link them down below as well as links to the recipes that I used. First up, we're going to be making some Greek chicken and rice bowls, an Italian beef meatball recipe that is great for a dinner meal prep. Next up is a green goddess dressing that is so delicious. I use this as a lunch meal prep with salads. I'm also going to be sharing the skinny taste recipe for egg salad. This is a great one for lunch meal prep as well. Another recipe I'm sharing is some chocolate chocolate chip banana muffins. These were a big hit with everyone in my house, especially my kids. And last up is a healthy recipe for blueberry scones. This video is not affiliated in any way with Gina or Skinny Taste. I just really love her cookbooks and the recipes on her website. So make sure that you check out those links for more inspiration. I really appreciate her practical approach to making food healthy while still using regular ingredients. So the first recipe that I'm sharing is a lunch meal prep and that is for Greek chicken and rice bowls. This is one that my sister suggested to me and I saw online as well and I thought it sounded great. It was one of those things that I really like all of the flavors of and when I make something like this and take it to work, it just makes me that much more excited to eat what I packed instead of going out to eat or eating in the cafeteria. So the first step to this recipe is to make the marinade for the chicken. And so for this, I added to my measuring cup some lemon juice, vinegar, olive oil, and minced garlic. I used a garlic press, as well as some dried oregano and salt and pepper. This marinade, uh, you can marinate the chicken for up to 24 hours, but I actually only marinated it for about 30 to 60 minutes, and it worked out just fine. There was plenty of flavor um, in the marinade to flavor the chicken breast. So I just have my chicken breast in a shallow dish and you can see that I've poked it with a fork just to help the marinade um, kind of seep into the chicken a little bit better and then I placed that in the refrigerator until it was time to cook it. Now you could grill this chicken or you could cook it in a skillet or in the air fryer. I have really liked baking my chicken for meal prep so I just put it in the oven at 450 degrees for 20 minutes and it's perfectly tender every time. Once the chicken breast was cool, I went ahead and sliced it into thin strips and I also got started cooking my rice. So this um, recipe calls to cook the rice in chicken broth, which I would recommend because it does give it a great flavor. I like using the Knorr chicken bouillon powder. I always keep that in my spice cabinet. It comes in handy when you need either chicken or beef broth. So I'm going to boil the rice until it is cooked through and then drain off any of the extra excess broth. If you don't have rice on hand for this recipe, you could use orzo or couscous or quinoa or pasta. I think any of those would work out fine. Or if you wanted to the, do this recipe a little bit more low carb, you could also serve it on a bed of lettuce. I think that would be really good too. So I have three glass meal prep containers here and I'll link these ones I have down below. I really like them because the lids snap on, they're super secure, they don't leak. And when I have food that I want to heat up, I prefer to use glass instead of plastic. So on top of the rice, I'm just gonna divide those two chicken breasts into three meal prep containers. And that was the perfect amount of chicken to go on top of the rice. Next, I'm going to wash up my veggies for the topping for the chicken. So I washed up a yellow pepper, some um, cherry tomatoes, and then I also washed up some fresh herbs. I used dill and chives. 
So what we're going to do basically is kind of make like a fresh veggie topping with feta cheese to go on top of these bowls. And the concept behind this is to heat up the chicken and rice portion when you're ready to eat it. And then you keep the veggie portion separately. Obviously you don't want to heat that up or it would just be a little bit gross, honestly. Um, and so then you have kind of like the warm rice and the chicken uh, mixed with the cold crunchy salad. It's really, really good. If you make any recipe out of this video, I would definitely recommend this one, especially if you like Greek flavors, um, you will definitely love it. So I'm finally chopping some yellow bell pepper and just putting it into a bowl along with the herbs and the tomatoes. And then I also had some black olives in the fridge that I wanted to get used up. And so I'm using those. I believe the original recipe called for Kalamata olives, but since I had these already, I didn't want them to go to waste, so I'm using those. Next, I'm going to squeeze some lemon juice over it, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of cucumber. This part of the recipe is super flexible, so you know any veggies or herbs that you have in your fridge that you need to use up that are in your crisper drawer, you could totally use them and it would be delicious. I added a little bit of salt and pepper and then decided to go ahead and add the other half of the lemon juice. Last, I am adding some feta cheese. If you don't like feta, you could totally leave this out. I love feta cheese, and so to me, the more the better. <laughs> I definitely made sure I added it. And so this is what the completed uh, sort of veggie salad looks like to go with the chicken and rice. Totally delicious. Actually, this would even be good on its own <laughs> as a salad or a meal prep. So here's how I went ahead and packed it up. Um, I have my chicken and my rice in the glass container and then separately in a plastic meal prep container, I have um, the feta with the vegetable salad. Um, those plastic containers are rubber made and I'll link those down below as well, but I stored the salad in that since I wouldn't be heating it up. One day I actually ate this for lunch while I was working from home and so here's what it looked like when I put it all together in a bowl. Even though I am working from home, some of the time. I actually really like to meal prep because it ensures that I eat something healthy and not a box of macaroni and cheese, but definitely recommend that recipe. It will not disappoint. Okay, so this next recipe that I'm gonna share with you is great for a dinner or a dinner meal prep, and the original recipe is called Italian Beef and Spinach Meatballs. So in my KitchenAid mixer, I have some wheat bread that I am mixing up with some milk, and this is what's going to help uh, bind the meatballs together. So just two slices of white or wheat bread, whatever you have on hand, and enough of a splash of milk to kind of get the mixture to uh, break down down and come together. I also freshly grated some Parmesan cheese in my food processor. I went ahead and bought a big block of it. I always think that, especially when you make meatballs, if you can freshly grate your Parmesan, it just makes it taste so much better. I would recommend that. So the recipe called for half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, so I added that to the mixer along with one egg. I'm also going to add some Italian seasoning. I have probably about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of that, and then also two cloves of garlic that I used um, um, crushed it with my garlic press. I added then my beef and my pork. The original recipe just called for ground beef, but I had both on hand. And so I decided to use a combination of ground beef and pork with these meatballs and it really turned out good. I don't think I've ever done that before, but I would totally recommend it. So once the mixture came together, I rolled these into balls and sauteed them in a big pot. I had two batches there and then I added marinara sauce. So I just wanna mention that this original recipe called for frozen chopped spinach inside the meatballs, which I think is a great option to get some veggies into your kids. I honestly did not know if my kids would be wild about the spinach inside the meatballs and actually on this day, my daughter had a friend over, and so I really wasn't sure <laughs> if the spinach inside the meatballs was gonna be a big hit, and so I left it out, but just know that the original recipe calls for that if you're trying to get some more veggies in. So here is what that looked like. It was totally delicious. We served it with spaghetti and garlic bread. If you wanted to meal prep this, you could just do the meatballs and the sauce ahead of time, and then all you have to do is heat that up along with some pasta, and you've got a super quick dinner. 
Okay, so this next recipe is for a salad dressing and this is the Skinny Taste Basil Green Goddess Dressing. I'm making this dressing in my food processor, but if you don't have a food processor, you could also make it in a blender. Um, honestly, if you don't have a food processor and you like to cook, I would definitely recommend it. I think that it's a good investment to have in your kitchen arsenal. You can see even just in this video, I used it probably two or three times, but I would say on average, I use it one or two times a week. So in the food processor, I am putting some mayo, some sour cream, uh, some lemon juice. Now, depending on what your dietary needs are, you could use light mayo or light sour cream. I did not have that on hand, and so I just used regular, but just keep that in mind um, when you're looking at these recipes. Definitely customize them to fit your dietary needs. Um, you saw me holding up the fish sauce there, so that was actually a substitution. The original recipe called for anchovies. I did not have any on hand, and sometimes I have anchovy paste on hand, but I didn't have any of that either. And I was reading the comments on the blog post, and it actually said that some people substituted fish sauce, which I did, and it worked out just fine. I think if you don't have fish sauce on hand, you could also use Worcestershire sauce. So in total for this recipe, you'll need about a cup of fresh herbs. Um, obviously, you'll want to use some basil since it is a basil green goddess dressing. I also used scallions and parsley and chives, but wh whatever you have on hand, whatever green herbs you have will work out wonderfully. So just process that until it becomes very, very smooth. If you've never had green goddess dressing before, uh, you should totally try it. It's delicious. It's like a ranch on steroids. It tastes so much fresh, fresher and so much herbier. I can't talk, <laughs> but this is one of those dressings that gets me excited about eating salad. I know I've said that before in a video and you guys probably think I'm crazy, but I think honestly that homemade dressing can really just like take salad to the next level. And I'm a person that loves salad anyway, but when I have something like this in the fridge at work, um, I'm more likely to eat it than if I were to pack a salad with bottled ranch dressing. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm just prepping a salad to eat for lunch the following day. I'm using this dressing. Uh, I'm chopping up some carrots, I'm not sorry, carrots. I actually did put carrots in it also, but I didn't film that. I'm chopping up some um, tomatoes and some cucumber. These were all veggies, honestly, that I had gotten at the farmer's market this weekend. So they were super fresh. And this salad container, I love it. It's from OXO. I'll link it down below. Um, it actually has a tray that goes on top of it if you have ingredients that you want to keep separate from your greens. And it also comes with a reusable dressing cup. So I love this. It's dishwasher safe. I've been using it for probably over a year now and it's perfect. So this was the salad I prepped. I actually ate this at home the following day. I added some grilled chicken to it and it was so good. I added sunflower seeds to it also. I would definitely recommend this dressing recipe. Um, like I said, if you've never tried it before, it's also really good just to use as a dip for raw veggies. Okay, so next up is the Skinny Taste recipe for egg salad. And I know egg salad is something super simple, but sometimes I get questions on how I make it, and so I thought it would be good to have a dedicated video also. I have some farm fresh eggs here, and I'm putting these in a pot. Um, sometimes I do use my Instant Pot, to hard boil eggs, but I didn't feel like doing it on this particular day. And so I just have eight eggs in my pot and I'm filling that up with cold water. The key to making hard boiled eggs and making sure they peel properly is to bring them to a boil on the stove, turn the heat off, put the lid on, and then let it sit for 15 minutes. Once the eggs have sat for 15 minutes, they are done and you can remove them to an ice bath until they're completely cool and then peel them. So my favorite way to make egg salad is to use my egg slicer to cube up the eggs. It's super easy. Um, this is also an OXO um, 
egg slicer. So OXO, if you're out there and listening, please come sponsor a video. I've been promoting your products for years and I love them. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, <laughs> um, I love that egg slicer and it makes it so easy. You just kind of put the egg in one way, turn it around and um, plop it into your bowl and it's great. So I'm adding some mayo to this. Um, this recipe is super simple. I would hardly even call it a recipe. You can add different things to it depending on what you like in your egg salad. The, this original recipe called for mayo, um, red onion, and then garnish it with chives. I did add some sweet pickle relish, which the blog post did say that obviously you can add dill pickle relish or sweet pickle relish. Some people add Dijon mustard. It's really one of those things that you just kind of have to play around with the flavors and see how you like it. Um, I typically make this for Adam. He really likes it on sandwiches for meal prep during the week, and he likes it a little bit sweeter. So I do usually add the sweet pickle relish to that. So in with my eggs and my mayo, I'm adding just a little bit of minced red onion. Um, I did feel like I had to add a little bit more mayonnaise than the original recipe calls for, but again, that's a totally, um, you know, totally a personal preference. I added some salt and pepper and just stirred that up. And then next I'll add my pickle relish. If you're doing keto or low carb, this is also a great option for meal prep as well. And you could leave the sweet pickle relish out or use dill pickle relish. So I just put this into a container once I made sure that it was seasoned properly. I minced up some chives and put that over the top. And this is how I store it in the fridge. Um, definitely do not make sandwiches with this ahead of time. Otherwise your bread will get super soggy. Um, but this is how we store it. And this made three sandwiches for Adam's lunches that week. Okay, so next recipe is some chocolate chocolate chip banana muffins. So in my KitchenAid mixer, I have two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to add a quarter cup of sugar. Uh, this recipe was a major hit with my kids. I always love healthy muffin recipes that I can make in my mini muffin tin and keep those out on the counter for them to have a healthy breakfast during the week. I think I've talked before that they love those mini muffins in um, the plastic bags that I, I can't remember if they're like Entenmann's little bites or what they're called, but I just feel like those are full of sugar and junk. <laughs> and if, at least if they're going to have muffins, I would rather have them have something that I made homemade. That way I know what's in it. So I have four bananas here and I just like to mash mine with a potato masher. I think that is um, the easiest way. You could also put them on a plate and mash them with a fork. That works just as well. To the mashed bananas, I'm going to add one egg. I believe the original recipe did call for two egg whites. Um, so if you're trying to cut calories or fat, you could definitely use that. But I just went ahead and used one egg because I didn't, I didn't want to waste eggs in the process. And then I also added some applesauce. I used cinnamon applesauce because that's what I had on hand and it worked just fine. So after I creamed the butter and sugar together, I went ahead and added the banana mixture and then I'll just mix that up until everything is well combined. Um, you can also see that I'm using my KitchenAid mixer for many of these recipes. I even used it for the meatballs. That's one thing that I really love using it for is for meatloaf or meatballs. I use it a ton. Uh, I went ahead and added my flour and my cocoa powder. Um, even just the addition of that small amount of cocoa powder makes these muffins seem super chocolatey and they definitely do not seem healthy at all. Um, this is something that you can make and you sort of feel like you're having a treat, but you're really just having um, kind of a healthified version of banana bread. Uh, I'm mixing everything together and then adding some chocolate chips. So I like to use mini chocolate chips when I make mini muffins, just because I think they distribute a little bit better throughout the batter. But if you didn't have chocolate chips, you could leave those out or just use the regular kind whatever you prefer. 
Uh, this mini muffin tin is great. I actually, I think I picked this up at Home Goods, uh, but they do sell it on Amazon. It's a Chicago metallic mini muffin tin, and this thing is great. I love it. I've tried so many mini muffin tins over the years, and this one is by far my favorite. You don't have to put paper liners in it or anything. I just use cooking spray and they come out just fine. So I'm using a uh, little cookie scoop to evenly distribute the muffin batter um, throughout these and this makes 24 mini muffins or you can also make 12 regular sized muffins with this recipe as well. Okay, so I popped those in a 325 degree muffin. If you're making regular sized muffins, you'll wanna bake them for about 30 minutes. Since these were mini, I baked them for about 20. Here is what they look like after I remove them from the pan and put them on a cooling rack. So delicious, these are super tender and you are definitely not going to miss the sugar or the butter in these. I broke one open for you so you could see the inside texture really good. Okay, so the last recipe that I'm going to share is a lightened up blueberry scone recipe. And this was posted on Gina's blog not too long ago. Um, it's a more recent recipe and it uses buttermilk. I have not made scones in forever. And so when I saw this and I had blueberries in my fridge, I knew I had to make it. I have tried different scone recipes before that are rather complicated, but this one is not. It's very simple and it's really good. So I'm whisking together the dry ingredients, which include two cups of flour, a quarter cup of sugar, salt, baking soda, and baking powder. Next, I am grating a quarter cup of butter. Make sure that your butter is either cold or frozen. The recipe does call for it to be frozen, um, but I did not really planned ahead that far so I just took it out of the fridge and it worked just fine. Uh, I've made biscuit recipes before using grated butter and it works really well. Uh, it's a great way to incorporate like little bits of butter in with your flour without having to use a pastry cutter. So I'm mixing in the butter with uh, the dry ingredients just using a fork that is the best way to sort of mix that up and incorporate it. Next I'm going to get together my wet ingredients. So I have three quarters of a cup of buttermilk one egg and then I'm also going to use one teaspoon of vanilla and besides the blueberries that's it this is sort of a one bowl recipe uh, super easy and if you don't have blueberries on hand and you wanted to try this you could also use um, chocolate chips or even add extra vanilla and then put a glaze on top so you could make like vanilla scones or chocolate chip scones. I really think that there's a lot of different ways that you could make this recipe. So I'm pouring the wet ingredients into the dry and then just use a fork to mix this together until it all incorporates into a dough. Add the blueberries and stir them in gently until everything is combined. So I'm scooping my dough out onto a baking tray that I've lined with a silicone liner. I believe I got these at Costco. Um, I don't use them super often, but I'm trying to use them more so that I don't um, produce more waste with parchment paper. And honestly, they work really, really well. I'm just using a ice cream scoop to scoop the scone dough out onto the baking sheet. You don't have to roll it out or anything like that. It's super easy. So I'm gonna pop these into the oven and these bake at 400 degrees for about 18 minutes. And this is what they look like when they come out. I was so happy with how these turned out. They are not super sweet. So if you like a really, really sweet scone, I would maybe recommend adding like a powdered sugar drizzle over the top. I don't prefer super, super sweet food anyway, so they were perfect for me. Okay, so just to recap what we went over in this video and the recipes that I shared, these are the Greek chicken and rice meal prep bowls, the Italian uh, beef meatballs with marinara sauce, the chocolate chocolate chip banana muffins. These are great and I'm actually thinking about making another batch of these soon because my kids plowed through the first batch 
Egg salad is another great idea for meal prep for the week for lunches. And then last but not least, the blueberry scones as well as the green goddess salad dressing. I hope that you guys try some of these recipes out. Let me know which one you are most excited to make. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for more meal prep inspiration, you can click on these two videos on the right. And if you have any requests for meal prep videos, please leave those down below. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.